Hello and welcome, I'm DDF Racer, and today I'm actually doing an R Factor 2 video, believe it or not. I know, it's been a while, and to be honest, I have kind of neglected R Factor 2, but that's only because I've been spending so much time in ACC, Race Room, and Automobilista 2 recently. I'm a little late to the party here, guys, but Studio 397 not only recently released the Ferrari 488 GTE, but Portland International Raceway 2, so I figured two birds, one stone, you know? Might as well try them both out at the same time. In this video, I'll be doing a 30 minute race against the AI. Not just against other GTE cars though, but the LMP2s as well, which should be pretty interesting, considering how short of a circuit Portland is. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy. Okay guys, so here we are in our Factor 2, getting ready to go racing. Portland International Raceway in the Ferrari 488 GTE car. I'm looking forward to this one. First time I've driven our Factor 2 in a long time, actually. So let's see how it all goes. Hopefully it behaves itself for half an hour. Against the AI, we are starting 10th in class out of about 18 GTE cars and 12 LMP2s in this race. I think there's a few behind us. Qualified out of position. Green, green, green. And now it's green lights. And away we go. Heading down towards the first chicane. Quite a tight chicane, so I'm going to have to be... Easy on the cold brakes and tyres. Just reacting to the AI here. Let them figure out the, where they're all going to the space out on the track and then we'll just kind of slot in with them. A bit wide there, lift out. Yep, there's an LMP trying to make up gaps already ahead of us. Good start. I think if we just tuck in, hold it nice and tight, the opportunities will present themselves. Normally in these kind of cars, you're used to racing for 6 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, but we've only got 30 minutes today, so there won't be many opportunities. On your way. As we head towards the hairpin for the first time. Very nice corner, this. It's so wide on entry. It's very narrow on exit. So there's plenty of lines in, but only really one line out. So, you got to think carefully. Do you go for the dive and compromise yourself, or do you go for the wide line and get the exit? And now, heading towards the end of the track, you want to try and keep the car over to the right as much as you can, but not too right. Because there's a concrete wall there, and you'll ding the car and you'll get a little bit of damage. Now, I don't think you can actually knock mirrors off in our Factor 2 yet. But you definitely can in real life, as we get the drive on Matthias Ralph ahead of us in the Porsche, the number 92. And that's a lap of Portland. Told you it was a quick lap. Hold your line. Clear double lap. Oh, he's good on the brakes. Wowza. AI's very good on the brakes. Oh, give him a little bit of a tap. Slow down on the apex of the second part that she came there. But that one really causes much damage. Then take a little Not bit more than damage. that. It's nothing. Uh, Mr. Spotter confirming it on the radio there. Nothing to worry about. Onwards and upwards with the race. Plenty of opportunities left. We're up to sixth already. I don't think it'll start like that for long because I think the tyre wear in this thing is quite noticeable actually. I'm not too sure actually, because I haven't really done a longer stint, but I did notice in practice the tyres went off much more quickly than I remember the GTE cars tyres going off. But I know that R Factor 2, um, sorry not R Factor 2, I know that Studio 397 did try and speed up the release of this car in time for the WEC 24 hour event, so that lots of Ferrari drivers could take part and obviously drive the Ferrari. But I'm not sure if they've done any work on it since then, but it is really nice to drive actually. Oh, Ralph is going to defend us again. We're going to have to be a lot later on the brakes into turn one this time though. Hold your line. Hold your line. Still there, yeah. No ABS in these things, of course. This is looking good. Your last lap time was at 111.53. Up to fifth. Yeah, no ABS in these GTE cars. Contrary to the GT3 versions of all these cars, there is no ABS, just traction control. So if you lock the brakes, you're going to damage the tyres. Which is something that I've not really experienced much recently driving in race room. Obviously they do have flat spots, but most of the races I do right tires are cold. have the damage turned off. Although that could be quite unforgiving when it is turned on, especially with suspension damage. But that's race room, this is our factor too. And honestly, I'm quite happy to be back. I spent a lot of time on R-Factor 2 towards the start of this channel's existence. Maybe not so much recently. I guess I kind of got a little bit burned out by it, you know? Like, I'm not going to lie, R-Factor 2 is technically one of the most difficult sims to work with. It tends to have a lot more unexplainable uh, 
problems than other sims, Still there. shall we say. Right. And it was very frustrating clear, clear to the right. with regards Great to driving. VR screen Keep freezers. Car right, clear right. V4, that's the quickest lap for your class. You've just done it, 111.20. With regards to VR screen freezers, I lost a few good results from the VLMC season because of them. Which kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth, you know, and the way that season finished with the Le Mans 20, uh, the Le Mans 4 hour race, not 24s, that was the VECs, I drove in the baby series, the VLMCs. Uh, the way that season finished with the 4 hours of Le Mans with Aidan Millwood being my co-driver, who did a grand total of one corner throughout the whole race, um, yeah, it wasn't great. It wasn't a great experience, so I'm kind of glad that I've had a little bit of a break from RF2. But it's good to be back, and I do want to come back for second season of the VLMC if it happens. Cold tires all around. I'm not sure if it will happen. The VEC will go on regardless. That is an institution as far as endurance racing is concerned. It will always be VEC, one of life's constants. But I don't know if there will be... Oh, nice little dummy there. On your right. I don't know if there will be a season two of VLMC, Still which, there. to be fair, it takes a lot of organisation. Sean Jacobs did a cracking job last year to basically devote all of his time to doing that. Oh, it's going to get the run back. So unless someone steps up and fills Sean's shoes, uh, I don't think it's going to happen, which is a shame, because I like the format of shorter races, especially where I live in Australia. To go racing in the VEC requires basically night shifts. Which isn't too convenient when you've still got to do a day job, a day job on the Monday. The right side tires are cold. Or just have any kind of social life during the weekend as well, really. I mean, obviously it's a lot better for the European people because it's at a convenient afternoon time for you. But for me, going racing at one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, I'm trying to move away from that a little bit. But the, uh, the VEC is the pinnacle. The WEC event. Oh. Ooh. Right side. A bit too clear wide on right. entry then, we lost a few right. positions. Right. Come on Dan, concentrate. Come on, watch these track limits. Please Dan. Dan Just a spot to agreeing. We're down to sixth again. We did make up a few more spots then. We'll get them back. We've got 23 minutes left in this race. We're back behind Mr. Porsche again. Right. Oh, he's going for the squeeze. Hold your line. Clear right. P6. Come on mate, we really need to get the hammer down now. Roger. It's a faster car approaching. That must mean there's an LMP2 behind us at some point, maybe? But yeah, like I was saying, the WEC 24-hour event where the racing, uh, the sim racing and the real world collided, basically. That was such a fantastic event. To see Lewis McGlade in the commentary box, to see so many people from Zancho, to see so many people from just the, the sim racer community in general going toe-to-toe -to -toe with all these real drivers, not just going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, working with them. It's just fantastic really makes me want to get back into our Factor 2 and endurance racing again. You know? So... Maybe it's worth all the early nights. And the sleepless days, you know? To go racing in the VEC. I'm, I'm sure many of you people who are watching right now who are a fan of the R Factor 2 content and the VLMC content would love to see me progress to the VEC. But it's a hell of a personal commitment. It really is. Right side. Oh, again, boxed in! Clear to the right. That lap was a 111.81. Left side, still there. Clear left. Give him the room. Sector 1 is 0.6. Off the pace. Come on down. Good stuff. Keep it coming. Thank you, Spotter. But the thing is, in the VEC, I wouldn't really be guaranteed a Zancho seat, to be honest with you. Like, Ed's a great guy and all that, but he's got a seriously fast roster of people on his, on his cards now. So... I mean, even in the VLMC were... I don't want to make it trivial, but... It wasn't taken as seriously as the VEC, you know? People would turn up on the day of the race, through, you know, throw a few practice laps in, and then go and dominate the field. Whereas I'd be throwing in hours and hours and hours of practice into the weeks before the event, and I'd still be the slowest out of the three Zancho cars. I mean, I'm, it's just my skill level, it's just where I'm at, you know? Like, I can be solid... Contrary to what you guys see on some of my videos and streams, I can be a solid racer, I can be a consistent racer, but compared to especially the, the Division 1 people in our Factor 2, I'm I'm not really there on pace, so... And I don't think it's Zancho's style to have a Division 2 kind of car or a Division 2 kind of team, I guess. 
It's just, you know, they're, they're up there at the top. They're a pro team. Which I'm very honoured to be part of, don't get me wrong. But I, uh... I just don't really see an, a spot for myself in the VEC, so if I was going to do it, I might have to do it alone. Or maybe even like a satellite team, part of Zancho. I'm not too sure. Okay, Dan, stay close. Wait for him to make a mistake. You know, do my own entry with the help of Zancho, but under an individual name. Maybe I could get some of you guys along. You know, to be my co-drivers and my engineers, like a DDF team, basically. That would be something. That would be pretty cool. Get the orange and turquoise on the side of the car. Anyway. We are 10 minutes into the race, and I've not really talked about this car or this circuit. You know, this is the whole point of this video. This is to talk about the Ferrari and Portland. And I've not really done either. I've just waffled about my own agenda for the first third of the race. So, the Ferrari, the 488 GTE. What's it like? like sector three. Well, I've driven it in ATC before. Looks like the leader's been dead. And I really liked it. You've just done a 111.40. You're two tenths off the pace in sector two. I really liked it. It was really... St Ooh, a bit of a concertina ahead of us there. We've got two Astons and a Porsche in fifth. That's 20 minutes. Do I like it in our factor two? Yes, I do. It feels incredibly stable, actually. It feels very dependable. I know that some of the our factor two tendencies in the car... Sector three is clear. It's yes, for the... To send it, mate. <laughs> There's Mr. Spotter. Some of the tendencies in R-Factor 2 and the GTE cars especially is for the rear to be loose. The BMW I knew was notorious for that. Should try and get the cut back on this guy. Oh, he's going to squeeze us over the curbs. That's a cut track. But I had nowhere to go. Clear left. Watch the track limits. We'll get a penalty if we don't. I, mean, I would have to drive the other GTE cars again to get a base for them, you know, get some kind of reference going. But being able to jump into this Ferrari immediately, I do like it. I do like it. The reverse camera can be a little bit bigger, to be honest, because the right-hand side mirror is a little bit out of the way. Keep your focus. B4. You know, to to check who's on. Oh, to check who's on my right-hand side. I got to look. I mean, I'm not going to do it now because I don't want to take my eyes off the race at mine. But I got to look all all the way over to the right, it's way out the way. And to be honest with you, that kind of proves the point. If I can't just glance over to it, it kind of makes it... See, look, it's all the way over there. Slow in, fast out. Keep the inside line covered. I can't really check to my right, and the field of view on the on the TV screen isn't, isn't great. Left is great, but it seems like a very wide car, very big car inside. By the LMP2 runners. But yeah, handling-wise, it's great. Very stable, very reliable, Come very dependable. On, We're losing time. And the track itself, it's just short and sweet. Ooh, maybe went in a little bit too hot there, perhaps. Hop it over the curbs, don't get the grass down. Get it in, and then floor it again. Sector 3 is yellow. It's just a real short and sweet track, you know? Sector 3 is clear. Like, there's not many oh, corners. Right. It's very it tight, like very cramped. But that's where the excitement is, I guess. Hold your line. Hold your line. Clear to the left. Woo! Nicely done. Your last lap time was at 111.47. You know, it's kind of like Lime Rock Park in that sense. A real short, real kind of classic style circuit where the corners aren't really conventional. You've got lots of long apexes. You've got lots of sweepers that lead into each other. Your tyre temperatures are okay. You don't really have that many um, traditional overtaking opportunities. Well, I mean, you got that herp in there, but you've really got to send it up the inside, which I guess is why they've made it wide. And then the first chicane is um, is pretty uh, dicey for overtakes as well. Got the LMP2 leader coming up behind us. I'm going to back out of it. Give him the spot. Oh, the Porsche ahead of me went into the wall a little bit. Did you see that, guys? Tapped it on entry. I think the AI was just trying to move out of the way and didn't realise he didn't have much space on the right there. So this is the battle for second place. Car left. We got Shimshin for second. Steady. Still there. Careful not to lock it up Clear too to much. Left. Got him. Well done, Dan. Nice move, mate. P2. That lap time was 111.81. The car behind's a faster class. So now. In the context of this race, as I go in a little bit too hot there, 
we got to try and get the car ahead. So we got, I think it's maybe 10 seconds to the leader, which isn't unachievable, considering we've got 16 minutes left of the race. We're not halfway through yet. It is if we make mistakes like that, though, and just miss our braking point completely. We've also got to keep in mind that the LMP2s are going to be coming through shortly. So that was the leader. The rest of the pack won't be far behind. And that is something that is pretty interesting about this track. You're halfway home. You're Multi-class racing. That star has been dead. We're all left. Multi-class racing. Green flag sector one. Can you imagine having the hypercar class, the LMP2 class, and the GTE car cl uh, class here? Where would everybody fit? Like the lap time, I'm, I'm pulling one minute elevens, one minute tens. The track temperature is The LMP2s are pulling one minute threes. Clear to the right. Blue flag. The gap two. Shimshan. Behind is increasing. It's now 4.3 seconds. Okay, Dan. There's a faster car approaching. You've just done a 111.28. It's going to get me on the right. In the in the blind right. spot. You can have it, mate. There you go. Still there. Clear right. Imagine the McLaren Senna's around here. They'd be sub one minute for sure. I mean, the LMP2 should be sub one minute for sure, to be honest with you. Because these are AIs on default setup, but they're, they're on 110% difficulty, you know? Like, I'm not I'm not cruising around here. I am actually pedaling it. Yellow flag, watch out. My driving's not fantastic, though, if I'm being honest. On your right. We think over has gone off. Clear to the right. Okay, so there we are. We're officially past the halfway mark, guys. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to leave it a like. Leave your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe because I do intend to make some more FF2 videos in the future. I have neglected this sim. If you subscribe for this in the first place, I do apologise to you. I've just been I've right just been a little bit busy with other stuff, really. It's right. so much going on in sim racing at the moment, you know? Something I can't wait for personally is the GT4 pack for ACC. ACC is one of those sims that I just haven't spent enough time in yet that it deserves. Like, I love it. Every time I open it and go racing in ACC, it's fantastic, but I just haven't given it the time yet. I need to do some proper races in that. But I also need to get back into our Factor 2. But then again, I also need to keep the race room stuff going. And then there's Automobilista 2 as well. There's Dirt Rally. Like, today, I've recently just... I just went on a bit of a spree, if I'm being honest with you. I looked at my bank balance and went, you know what? Yeah, do it. <laughs> I bought Beam NG and Euro Truck okay, Simulator. In. In. The gap is something, one something a little bit different, though, you know? Because I've been doing my Toka 2 touring car streams on a Saturday morning for me here in Auss Aussie. But for most of you guys, it's Friday night in Europe and the UK. Um, faster car approaching. And now that I've finished that championship mode, I want to do something else that's nice and chill. So they, they could be some good alternatives. The lap time was at 110.85. That's your best lap in this session. Okay, there's my fastest lap of the session so far. It's not the fastest lap of the race, because obviously that's done by the LMP2 cars. I really feel like I'm starting to get to grips with this track now. I think I'm closing the gap down to the leader, but that's only because they got caught up in a little bit of LMP2 traffic. We'll, we'll have the same again. Left side. Oh! Left. Oh! Go on then. Clear left. You can have that, mate. I didn't think you were going to go for it, but it was a little bit of a little bit of a nudge there, so I thought I'd give him. You've used half your fuel. Give him the spot. All right, so tires look good. Fuel looks good. Gap to the leader looks good. Right tires are cold. We might have a chance here, guys. Might have to get the tiny trophy out if we carry on like this. And obviously, now that I've said that, we're going to go for the inevitable bin. Just come around the final corner to complete lap 15. About seven tenths off our fastest lap so far. You've just done a 111.58. That inside curb's pretty tricky. It's a struggle to get the power down because it's not as grippy as the tarmac. I think it's a concrete surface through the first chicane there. Oh, a bit loose on the rear then. Code Brown. John Miller, bring the underpants, mate. You 
Yeah, that first chicane is probably the trickiest part of the, uh, the, the circuit. Because the curbs are pretty high, you can't just monster the curbs like you can here. You can't just drive straight over them. They're pretty raised, so they will unsettle the car. It's pretty much two 90 degree corners back to back. As opposed to this chicane, which is pretty much as brave as you want to do it. It kind of reminds me of the last uh, section of the Nürburgring. The old chicane though, the, the faster open style chicane, I think the endurance chicane. With the whoop boom, you know, the left, right, and then the, the right at the end. Okay, Dan, keep doing what you're doing. Very Just similar to that. We're quickest at the moment. Your lap time was 110.67. Oh, that was a pretty good lap. Was that the fastest so far? It was. That's my personal best. Is that is that the leader? Have we caught up, like, six seconds already? Wow, he must, must have had a big struggle in the traffic. I wonder what car he's driving. I can't quite tell from here. One of the downsides of VR is the resolution isn't fantastic. So I just see a blurry mass of pixels that looks like a vague outline of a car. If I was on a monitor, I'd probably be able to tell, but I just I just can't give up my VR headset. It's too good, guys. Ten minutes to go. That's ten minutes left. Mm, crunch time. Ten minutes left to go in the race. It's going pretty quickly, actually. Yellow flag in sector one. And this is something... Is the car approaching. He's racing us for position. Don't oh. expect a blue flag. Oh, so an LMP2's coming up, but you must be out of sync. Now, this is something I've said about R-Factor 2 many, many times Wait, before, uh, guys. When it all works, when it all comes together, together, it's absolutely Focus. fantastic. Doing Nothing it. comes close. That, that was a 110.52. You know, you've got your day-night cycle, you've got your wet-dry conditions. It's all variable, it all transitions. The physics are pretty good. The feedback's pretty good. The graphics, I mean, the performance is great, you know? I mean, it doesn't stutter too much in VR. The recording on the desktop is good as well for you guys. You can run the graphics at a reasonable amount, and it still looks decent. The sounds, well, well let's be honest, nothing will ever be as good as the sounds in Race Room. Blue flag. ACC comes close. But yeah, the uh, sounds enough factor two are just. Right side. They're alright, they're okay. Right. High temperatures are good. And when it all works, it's so good. But I'll let you in on a, on a little uh, behind the scenes knowledge, a little bit of a secret, guys. This isn't the first time I've tried to record this race today. Um, about an hour ago, I was five minutes into the first attempt. And I had a screen freeze. And I had to do a complete restart. And then it didn't recognize the workshop content of the Ferrari for some reason. It glitched out. So I had to basically unsubscribe and resubscribe again. Sort out a few package files. And then back into it again. Which ultimately cost, I'd probably say, another hour or so. So for the purposes of a half an hour race like I'm recording now, it's, it's taken the best part of nearly two or three hours. Which... It's not great when you consider you should just be able to jump into something and just press record and just go. I mean, a casual sim racer... I mean, not, not not even just a casual sim racer. A seasoned professional, such as, like, you know, your, your Jensen Buttons, your Fernando Alonso's, your Tony Canans. They haven't got time to sit around in menus and configuration files. You know, they just want to jump in and race. They may not have the... technical expertise to do that. I mean, I'm just... I'm assuming here. I don't actually know. I mean, Jensen Button could be a a bit of a whiz when it comes to JSON files and <laughs> player configs and all that thing. I, d I don't know. <laughs> well, I imagine he's probably spent most of his youth Whiskey hanging around place. bars and getting drunk. And buying yachts and that kind of thing. I mean, which is nothing wrong with. You know, we all, we've all got to dwindle away our youth somewhere. Some of us spend it inside the the depths of a text file, you know? Some of us spend it behind a bar. Each to their own, but yeah, it just... Yellow flag in people three. in that situation just do not have the time to play around with settings, and they're going to get frustrated, and they're going to go, nah, I don't like this. What's the alternative? And mostly the alternative is eye racing. It's probably, I'd say, the industry standard as far as competitive online sim racing is concerned, and probably what most of the professionals see as sim racing. When, 
if you mention to a driver who doesn't necessarily sim race, hey, do you want to go sim racing? They'll probably think it's in iRacing, to be honest with you. I don't think anyone's really heard of race stream apart from a couple of DTM drivers and touring car drivers. Sector one. Sector one is yellow. Which isn't a bad thing. It just means it's just not as widely known. But yeah, industry standard, I'd say, is iRacing. So, Studio 397 recently with the WC 24 hour event. I've had a fantastic opportunity to get mounds and mounds and mounds of feedback from real world racing drivers. And not just racing drivers, Michelin as well. The actual tyre supplier of the Le Mans 24 hours. You know? How often do you get that kind of input? And all the people on the official broadcast, all the stewards. It's just... It's the spotlight was well and truly on Studio 397. I just hope that they use all of that spotlight, all of that attention, all of that feedback to put in the changes in our factor 2 that we all know it needs. And that we've all been waiting so many years for. I don't really care about the new UI, to be honest with you. It'd be nice. But I'd much rather have the fact that you can just run minimum tyre pressures fixed and have no consequence. Come on, keep it together. I'd love to have the rear anti-roll bar bug fixed where you just set that to detached and you get nice grip. You know, you shouldn't have to... That was a 111. You know, you shouldn't have to set up cars in that way because that's what the engine likes. You should have to set up cars in a way that is realistic. True to the real-life cars, true to the endurance cars themselves, you know? And now they have the feedback to, to know what's right and what's not. And I know a lot of people are going to say, Oh, the red flags in the WC24, you know, oh, the server was unreliable. To be honest with you, that's probably th the best that the servers have ever performed. And you're going to get red flags in real life races, you know? You're going to get disconnects, you're going to get random issues, you're going to get problems. Tire barriers are going to get destroyed and they're going to have to red flag it to fix them. So it's no different than that. And the fact that... I mean, this is something that R-Factor 2 does very well, and something that very important Potato and myself, from my live chat and just general channel hero, have discussed at length. It's the fact that no other sim handles ping like R-Factor 2. All right, Dan, there's a faster car bearing down on you. It does it it's incredibly well. I'm in Australia, everyone else is in Europe. You would never tell that we've got, like, 300 just ping. Uh, <laughs> it just... It behaves fantastically. It behaves really, really well. Anyway, guys, we haven't got many laps left in this race. Maybe three or four at most, as I've got an LMP2 steaming up behind me. I'm not going to give him the inside because I don't want to get offline. I'm closing up with the leader here. Let's not forget there is actually a race going on at the moment. I'm closing down the leader of the GTE class. I'm not closing down by as much as I would like to. He's still seven tenths of a second ahead. I'm pushing as far as I can. I'm going to let the LMP2 buy on the straight here. But I'm going to go quiet next lap, guys. All right. I'm going to let you listen to the sounds of our factor 2. The Ferrari 488 Jeep. What? Oh! Three laps to serve this penalty. Oh, no! Oh, our factor 2. Come on, I was letting him pass. Ignoring blue flags. Oh, well, that's that then, guys. I've got a penalty. What is it? Is it a drive through Is it stop and go? I can't quite tell. Let's see if I can look on the bottom right. Not in the braking zone, of course. Oh, that's a massive shame. Anyway, enjoy the sounds. Okay, Dan, there's a faster car approaching. We've got two laps left to come in and serve this penalty. Yellow flag, sector three. You're reeling? Yin, in. The gap's now 0.6. That's two minutes left. Two minutes. Blue flag. On your left. Clear left. Green flag sector three.
Okay, well there's a lap of the audio, guys. I actually managed to be quiet for a minute. Blue flag. There's a group of faster cars behind. I got two laps left to come and serve the penalty. Far left, three wide, two left, clear on the left. So that was for the win. On your left, clear left. No, it wasn't for the win because I completely nice botched my braking. Car right, clear right. Oh, well. I don't think I'm going to come in and serve it because there's no point. We're at the end of the race. This isn't really for keeps. This is just more to demonstrate the car and the track and everything. We are in the lead of the race, but to be honest, I... Ooh, ooh, I think I maybe have ho overheated the tyres a little bit there. Yeah, I'm not going to come in. It's academic serving it right now, guys. We're going to... Five minutes of fuel remaining. We're going to cross the line. Looks like a bit of a wear on your left front. It's not telling me to come in this lap, so I'll do it next lap. Maybe do a Michael Schumacher 1998 Silverstone as we cross the line. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. That could have been such a good finish to the race. But I guess it takes the pressure off in that regard, guys, that... You know, I don't have to focus too much on the actual racing now. I can just wrap up the video and have a nice little chat with you. I kind of feel like I've just sat here for half an hour and ranted, to be honest with you. I hope you've got... Oh, we've been disqualified. Yay! DNF! No, no, not a DNF, a DQ racer. Not DNF racer, because I did I will finish. Just got disqualified. DQ racer! Fantastic. I think that's the first time that's happened. Blatant disregard for the rules. Jimmy Allison, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I hope this kind of gives you an idea of what the new Ferrari is like to drive. I may not have commentated on it too much. I may have shared a few of my thoughts and feelings. But hopefully you picked up more from watching me drive it and seeing how it handles in my actual commentary itself, because that has been a little bit lacking. And same with Portland as well. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the track looks like, how it drives. I love it. I really want to actually do more here. Like, I might do a longer race. If I'm not coming back to the VLMC next season, if there is no VLMC, I might do some racing here offline, you know? Ooh, bit of a tap from the LMP2 there. We come across the line! We would have won the race, but we were disqualified. Ah, what a shame. Yeah, I really hope the VLMC comes back. If not, I will consider the VEC, but it's just mighty inconvenient for me, you know, guys? Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the racing, hope you enjoyed the content. Um, share your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think of the new Ferrari. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you like the direction that um, R Factor 2 is going in with the recent changes? Any just general thoughts? What do you think of Portland? Is it a good addition to the track? I mean, it was free. All right, let's not forget that. Studio 397 did not charge anybody for this circuit. It is available for everyone who owns R Factor 2, which I think is a really nice touch, you know? They could have put it as a DLC like Le Mans or the Nordschleifer or Sebring, you know, and the, the, the prices are a little bit steep, if I'm being honest with you, with our Factor 2 sometimes. It's great content, but it can be a little bit steep, and the Ferrari wasn't free, that's for sure. The Ferrari was like, what, eight Australian dollars or something? I'm not sure if it's part of the pack yet. Probably, probably is. I'm not too sure. You can correct me in the comments. <laughs> I would love to know your thoughts, guys. What do you think? And do you want to see more R Factor 2 content? Are you one of the OG subscribers who subscribed for R Factor 2 and this kind of stuff and has been a little bit disappointed that it's gone? Because these are the things that I want to know, you know? I want to listen to you guys. I want to make the content that you want to watch. I also want to make stuff that I want to, you know, enjoy as well. But I did really enjoy this. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that R Factor 2 didn't freak out on me for a second time today. Oh, anyway, I'm rambling. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave it a like, share it in the comments, and subscribe to see more. I've been DDF Racer. Look after yourselves, and I'll see you all soon.